Hello, good evening. This is Dr. Zero Melia, and we are live streaming again. It's the upcoming. We are continuing with the uh, medical certificate cause of death. This is lesson two, actually, but it's lesson nine for my podcast. So we're going to continue as I am trying my best. Yeah, we're live already. And okay, so introduce myself. I my name is Zero Miller. This is Legal Mandates. Legal Mandates for the Philippines in regards to the medical certificate cause of death. Okay, so we're continuing from our last session. Last session was about the uh, what was it about? An introduction to the uh, medical certificate cause of death. So here we go. While we are doing some thumbnails, yeah, we're going to do a little thumbnail so that anybody who is joining us. Can join us. Snip, snip a little bit to get a little thumbnail going. So I'm not affiliated with the Department of Health, but I was able to uh, undergo the training uh, for the training of trainers. So as part of it, I'm trying to get a good understanding and how I could present this to my colleagues so again here thumbnail just you know get a good thumbnail last screenshot okay. so let's go to the first to the first slide ignorance of the law is no excuse so everybody has to follow the law and as I discussed on the previous video, uh, during the COVID pandemic, the DOH already uh, issued guidelines on how the medical certificate cause of death should be written. So uh, it doesn't it doesn't excuse anybody who did not read it because this was like three years ago and they already started the pilot program uh, a little like two years ago and they're continuing now that's why I was able to get the uh, training of trainers uh, seminar so it should not be an excuse but it should be it should be uh, a reason why you should be taking courses like this. So the session objectives. Discuss the death registration laws and processes and analyze the medical certificate cause of death concerns and their management. So this is what we're going to tackle in this uh, session. So this is a review Republic Act number 3753 which is the law on registry of civil status. This was approved already November 26, 1930, and it took effect uh, in, uh, after a few months in February 27, 1931. It says there that there is a compulsory registration of facts and acts about the person's civil status from birth to death. So, as a review, the civil status uh, from birth, and then whether it, he got married, he or she got married. Uh, do they have, do they have kids uh, and then the, uh, the death certificate is the last uh, entry for the uh, registration for of the person civil status so civil status is continuous permanent compulsory and universal recording of the population's vital events so I discussed this in length in the previous um, lecture where in it's important that uh, every doctor in the Philippines have has to learn 
uh, how to report the cause of death so that uh, the data that, is, that will be presented to the public and also to the decision makers uh, will be uh, in harmony with what the Department of Health and the rest of the country will be aiming for in the future. Tags. Okay, so DOH Academy. This will be available in the DOH Academy shortly. Department of Health Academy. So those who are those healthcare workers, whether you're nurses, midwives, this is a, a program for doctors, but uh, as I take it, uh, they are inviting IT professionals of healthcare institutions so that there is this thing called the smart verbal autopsy, which is implemented globally and is uh, only being implemented now in the Philippines, uh, which would be uh, something that the healthcare institution can use to put in the death certificate. So it's a little different from the way we used to do uh, uh, writing the causes of death. So, so the DOH Academy is um, adjusting its um, way of teaching. So it's not just for medical doctors anymore. So this is going to be involving uh, other professionals in the uh, in the field, okay, in the healthcare field. Medical certificate cause of that. I'm writing out the tags for the YouTube video. So this is live. Medical certificate of death. Medical certificate cause of death. Cause of death. This is a live stream. And legal mandates. Okay. Recording, recording date. I'm recording this November 25. This is education. Type. I do not like to put the type. Yeah, that's it. Save. Uh, you can view the. Uh, rest of the uh, lectures as I made them as I make them uh, when you follow the uh, UH Academy reaction video podcast that I placed on the on my YouTube page so Republic Act number 3753 law on the registry of civil status it, in section 6 of the said RA 3753 no human body shall be buried unless the proper death certificate has been presented and recorded in the office of the local civil registrar. This was done in the 1930s. Of course, there has been, as we will be discussing in this lesson, there has been um, adjustments made for our Muslim brothers and indigenous people who has customs uh, who has to practice their customs because uh, as I take it some of the customs require that they be buried uh, in less than 24 hours in less than 24 hours okay so presidential decree number 856 which is the code of sanitation there shall be no burial without a death certificate it should the death certificate must be issued by the attending physician so at that time there was uh, less uh, number of physicians so there are doctorless areas uh, previously uh, right now there are still some doctorless areas in the Philippines because it's an archipelago uh, most doctors want to practice where there is income so they usually do their most of the doctors are concentrated on urban areas uh, rural healthcare areas like the one I serve uh, there are some that have doctorless areas so when there is doctorless areas it should be issued by the mayor it can be issued by the mayor the death certificate can be issued by the mayor the SB member of the municipal secretary for burial purposes only but it will be forwarded within the 48 hours after death to the local health office of course if there is no doctor in the local health office the 
that certificate can be forwarded to the uh, local health board okay, or the interzonal health board. These are some of the uh, adjustments made because uh, this that certificate process has been has been uh, the laws or mandates that are set in here are was set in the 1930s so from that time to now there is there has been changes so any exemption to the above 48 hours or two days yes there are exemptions because there are areas in the Philippines that are only accessible by boat okay so some some areas uh, are very remote so there are exemptions but it must it is important that the death certificate be filed presidential decree number 856 of the code of sanitation so deceased Muslims or indigenous Filipinos may be buried without a certificate of death but they must report the death within 48 hours after burial okay within 48 hours after burial that is the uh, law but due to uh, areas that may be in conflict there is still there may still be exemptions but it has to be stated why you will be filing a death certificate after 48 hours because that's against the law so with the attachment to Muslims or IP death which will be discussed here so attachment to the Muslim death Muslims death so this is the form name of the disease including Hajj name and traditional title if any so this is different from the that certificate that we usually uh, uh, usually given to us in our rural health clinics so full name of spouses in chronological listing persons who perform the burial rites these are the attachment for the Muslims death and then the attachment for the IP indigenous people certificate of death uh, for the indigenous people so this is an example from Banawe from Ifugao region 1 so name of the deceased including traditional title other names that date of death so this is an example only uh, date of birth ethnic affiliation of the deceased will be placed full name of the spouses in chronological listing so burial rights who was the officiating person so this will be this has to be filled up okay and attached on the on the certificate of death so who certifies death in the hospital death in the hospital <clears throat> can will be certified as such so death in the room or the ward the certifier must be the attending physician okay the attending physician in the emergency room it the ER medical officer will be the certifier this is according to the guidelines set by the uh, DOH and the CRBS so uh, previously there were uh, there were some ER medical officers some uh, some doctor that was assigned but now we all hospitals are required to have an ER medical officer on duty so they will be the ones to be signing the emergency room death certificate so ambulance in the ambulance there is still of course as I've, I've mentioned in previous videos uh, here in the Philippines the Department of Health requires that it, an ambulance must be manned by a, an ambulance doctor so even though that's not much of a practice elsewhere in the world because most ambulances uh, internationally like in the US or in Europe ambulances are are manned by EMT bees and the doctors are just the are the medical directors so in in so in their areas the certifier is the medical director but here in the Philippines it's required that 
to be able to have a license as an ambulance you must have a, an accompanying doctor if there is no accompanying doctor the ambulance is treated as a patient transport vehicle that's what uh, the classification for the, of the DOH for those vehicles that do not have doctors in them and if there is no doctor the emergency room or ER medical officer will be the one signing the death certificate so when reportable or doubtful cause of death it will be the medical legal officer which is now uh, commonplace in almost all um, primary or secondary to tertiary hospitals okay so there is usually there is usually a medical legal officer assigned uh, even though they may be there may be problems with their scheduling okay especially in primary care institutions in remote areas so legal mandate the physician who completes and signs is attesting to the best of his knowledge that the person name and the certificate died from the cause and circumstances of the death stated so it's it's important that the last physician that saw the patient is the one who must be signing the uh, certificate of death okay because he knows the patient he actually saw the the body of the of the patient when he died and was the last attending the last one who attended the, the patient okay so he has a very good recollection or a or an applause because this is a problem uh, right now because here in Olongapo the one sign the death certificate is usually a health a city health officer or a rural health physician who never saw the patient uh, during his or her last moments so that's why this training is being conducted so that it is uh, it is important or the culpability or the accountability of the of signing the certificate cause of death will be the will be will fall on the last attending physician of the patient if there are no attending physicians actually it says there that uh, whoever was the last one to see the patient within the past six months but uh, if there is, if the patient did not see attend uh, a medical doctor within the past six months it may be signed by the uh, local health officer the reported cause of death represent the physician's best medical opinion. So we'll go on this one on the next lessons on how on how uh, verbal autopsy and how certificate causes of death can be written. Okay. So who certifies dead on arrival? So this is the this is the problem nowadays and in. Manila in, in the national capital region where they have been conducting this uh, training on the medical certificate cause of death uh, they have been they have been uh, implementing this as you can see on this slide that the emergency officer will be the one who will be signing the death in a doctorless ambulance he will sign he will place the natural manner of death with no suspicion of foul play brought to the hospital because if there is suspicion of foul play, it will be up to the medical legal officer to sign the cost of death. Okay. So who certifies death in the community? So with medical attendance, it will be the last one attending the patient. So medical attendant. So we were asked if six months is a viable. Uh, viable uh, time frame to say that this patient was attended by that doctor so as far as the guidelines the present guidelines is concerned that's the uh, that's the guidelines if you attended the patient within the past six months you are the medical attendant you are you have the best medical opinion as to how 
the patient had died. So you are you are you are accountable for writing the um, medical certificate cause of death. So no medical attendance if he was not seen within the past six months. The local health officer will be the one to do the uh, certification cause of death. And if there is rel there are relatives present, which uh, in my experience there are like 20% of the time there are no relatives present. Uh, sadly, uh, when pink patients die in the community, uh, they're usually not attended by relatives. So that's according to my experience. So uh, the verbal autopsy can be used. The verbal autopsy programs can be used to be able to place a better uh, that cause of death or for the patient uh, for the patient that is uh, uh, present and for the presented case. So medical legal cases, it will still be up to the medical legal officer so SOCO the scene of the crime the operatives uh, usually have a medical legal officer so PNP uh, or uh, the, po the police automatically the police automatically have a doctor uh, assigned but in some rural areas, uh, the PNP may not have a medical legal officer and they may be dependent on the nearest uh, local government hospital to provide them with a medical legal officer. So doctorless area, again, uh, there are areas, again, rural areas here in the Philippines who have no doctors. It may be issued by the mayor or municipal secretary for burial purposes, but it will be forwarded to either the any local health office or uh, which is which falls under the uh, zonal health care zone uh, which is uh, another novel I know uh, novel novel idea presented by the DOH because for example uh, if in Mindanao uh, somebody died in the in 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 a remote area the nearest in that zone will be uh, the rural health physician who is assigned to that zone will be the one to sign the certificate cause of death so administrative order number 2020 008 this is the administrative this is this this is the one that sets the rules on medical certification of cause of death this is the one i told you about that it was released January 2020, but January 2020 was the time that the uh, COVID pandemic started. So this is why uh, only now, three years after, uh, we are doing this training uh, because right now this is imp it's important that this be implemented, especially in the universal healthcare. Um, universal healthcare proce procedures will be implemented soon. It, the quality of care, healthcare in the Philippines must be up to the standard. So, in the AO 2020-08, the last attending physician is the doctor who attended to the disease during his last illness, immediately prior to death. So, immediately prior. So, or treated the disease through examination, medical advice, or medications within 12 months prior to that. So, in the 2020-008, they placed 12 months, but the those who wrote this AO are seeking because uh, they are seeking an amendment to it because a lot of doctors in Manila have been suggesting that this be six months rather than 12 so it will be implemented early next year that the amendment to this will be implemented early next year because they've already started to uh, have that amendment uh, approved okay so fetal death registration age of gestation less than 20 weeks born alive no weight less than 500 grams the, it will not be required to register the death. 
there will be no form to use. So if it's not born alive greater than 500 grams, you accomplish the certificate of fetal death and register. You have to fill out the 9 times 19 to 22A of the certificate of fetal death. The form will be certificate of fetal death, CFD. 20 weeks or more includes stillbirth, certificate of fetal death still, and then fill out items 9 to 22 of the CFD. Still the same, but it will be indicated there that it's more than 20 weeks. 20 weeks. Guide on when to accomplish COLB or COD for fetus born alive but died later. So intrauterine life less than 7 months. The, the, the fetus live less than 24 hours. You will accomplish the COLB and the COD with remarks for statistical purposes. So you will be, it, it will have a checkbox there for statistical purposes. Less than 7 months. But the fetus live more than 24 hours, you will be signing the COLB and the certificate of death and register. Seven months or more, and it, whether it live less than 24 or more than 24, you will be accomplishing, accomplishing the COLB and the COD and register. So infant death registration, less than seven months alive, less than a day, you will be accomplishing two copies of the COLB and COD with remarks for statistical purposes. One copy each for LCR and the civil register. So the form to use is the COLB and COD. This will be shown. Seven months or more, one to seven days, you will accomplish the COLB and the certificate of death and register. Fill out items 4 to 19 of the COD, COLB and four CODs will be used. So it's not for statistical purposes only, it will be used uh, by the local health board and the statistics will be used by the local health board and the local register. More than 7 days, accomplish the COLB and COD and register, fill out nine items 19 B of the COD. So this is it, COLB and 4 COD. Medical legal death. If the physician believes or suspects that death was due to violence or crime, then he is duty bound to immediately report to the authorities of the concerned PNP or the NBI. Okay, so we were told uh, about the jurisdiction of the NBI and the PNP. Uh, NBI are those uh, who have a higher status. Okay, death uh, of senators, uh, death of judges it will be investigated by the NBI if there is violence or crime involved but uh, for everybody else it will be up to the uh, PNP this is what uh, our trainers told us referral of death so it's in here PNP jurisdiction RA 6975 general jurisdiction investigates and prevent crimes affect the arrest of criminal offenders and bring offenders to justice and assist in their prosecution. It's a general jurisdiction, so it involves everybody. So the PNP. NBI will have jurisdiction RA 10867 in human trafficking cases. If there is extra legal killings by state security forces against journalists and activists, killings of justices and judges, so this, this is the one I'm talking about, threats to security of high level officials like the senator. Cases referred by the President or the Supreme Court, I think. I think this is supposed to be DOJ, so, yeah. Reportable deaths. Deaths due to injuries, physical, chemical, and electrical, where circumstances suggest commission of offense by somebody including but not limited to. So these are reportable vehicular and industrial accidents. There is actually a form. It's in the form. Burns, mauling firearm or gunshot injuries, assault and battery, unnatural accidents or disasters due to force majeure and suspected self-injury or suicide. These are reportable because they are it's important that they that the authorities uh, need to uh, need to act on it like the PNP okay the police has to act on this so this it's it's highly reportable. 
So this must be reported to either the PNP or the NBI. Cases of suspected evident criminal abortion. So abortion is not legal in the Philippines. Poisoning, okay, or intoxication. Cases referred from PNP or NBI or patients under police custody. Cases of undiagnosed coma or unconsciousness. Cases of decapitation, wherein they have to find either the body or the head. The cases where body found in advanced state of decomposition and when inclusive verbal autopsy, that's verbal autopsy, VA, results suggest suspicious cause of death. So when there's a suspicious cause of death, you have to report it to the PNP or the NBI. Again, number eight, dead on arrival cases with improbable or inconsistent medical history arousing suspicious like but not limited to deaths due to external causes, including fetal death, death due to animal bites. So here in, there was a question raised here because not all animal bites are reportable to the PNP or NBI. It's just that this deaths due to animal bites have to be like a uh, dog attack, uh, the patient, which caused the death, okay? Like, uh, it, it, it was mauled by a dog or uh, mauled by a by, by a tamarau or uh, bitten by a snake so if the, the cause are, is due to an animal bite it's reportable because uh, if the animal well if it's a pet snake okay so I said snake but if it's a pet snake if there is an owner of uh, the dog they are liable for damages okay so it will be reportable okay so unreasonable death in the ER or OR it will be reportable to the NBI or the uh, PNP death within 24 hours of hospitali hospitalization without diagnosis so whenever we hospitalize patients they we usually have an admitting diagnosis so if there is no diagnosis, there it, it may there may be suspicious. It may be suspicious, and it may be reported. Unidentified bodies, because the PNP will be the one, uh, especially in um, disasters. Uh, unidentified bodies will be in uh, documented, okay, and by the PNP, and it's part of the it's part of the. Uh, uh, process of identifying the bodies, uh, give, giving identification of the bodies to the to uh, possible relatives, okay, so they may be able to help with identification of the bodies uh, later, especially during natural disasters. Any other case not falling under the above categories but has legal implications. Uh, I was not given any examples of this, but if, if there is any uh, legal implications uh, it must be uh, referred to the PNP wherein the doctor or the medical legal officer uh, involved will be the one doing the uh, certificate cause of death that's under special cases so <clears throat> when a vehicle ship or a plane there is a plane crash or a ship sank or is there is a vehicular accident massive uh, Ma massive there is a mass in casualty incident the report will be uh, from the driver the captain or the pilot if there is no survivor it will be the owner <clears throat> who will sell it to certify uh, this is still blank because mostly it's a uh, it falls under the jurisdiction of the PNP it depends on the incident okay it may be under the uh, it may be under the local health officer depend, depending on the area but if it's a ship involved okay so uh, presumption of death is, uh, is given if there are no survivors especially in open sea incidents how about mass deaths so the report will be from the nearest kin or the person with the knowledge 
certifi certification will be through the local health officer with affidavit of two disinterested persons. <clears throat> so it, they, they gave an example of um, Typhoon Yolanda where uh, certain people were uh, reported as dead uh, due to insurance purposes. So because uh, their relatives may be claiming the, the insurance so they requested that the there will be two disinterested persons there will be two per, the two other persons who is not affiliated with the family that will certify that this patient has indeed died in that uh, in that uh, natural disaster so there, there has been uh, reports that there have been insurance frauds that came out of uh, natural disasters such as Typhoon Yolanda. So that's why there is this guideline. There has to be an affidavit of two disinterested persons. If there is nobody, specify body not identified. Okay. Republic Act number 386 is an act to ordain and institute the civil code of the Philippines. So in Article 412 of this RA 386, no entry in the civil register shall be changed or corrected without a judicial order. Once, once the certificate cause of death has been submitted, it is now official. So it's important that the medical certificate entries must be correct and complete before registration since there is prohibition against change or correction of entries without a judicial order. That registration can be denied. So <clears throat> this is something that I did not know about before but it is now a common practice in Manila where in the reviewer which is usually the local health officer will be denying the death registration if essential entries are not there so essential entries to identify the deceased and his or her cause and when applicable circumstances of death should be reported otherwise it is valueless so if 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 it's illegible it's valueless if it's it doesn't if it doesn't um, represent a correct cause of death it is valueless so it must be correct and it must have sufficient information so RA 3753 section 6 circular number 4 1973 states that in all cases of death even with medical attendance death certificate must be reviewed and signed by the local health officer before it shall be accepted for registration so before it is filed and final it must be reviewed and signed by the local health officer so what happens if the local health officer is absent it can be signed by the uh, uh, rural health physician or anybody who has the uh, capacity or delegation uh, given by the local health officer that was uh, that point was made clear to us because not every time uh, the local health officer appointed may be available because sometimes they may be sent somewhere else, especially on a seminar or a meeting with the Department of Health. So the local health officer can delegate the signing or reviewing of the health certificate. That's why uh, every doctor must be in the know of, with regards to the to how the medical certificate cause of death must be filled out. So delayed registration. Delayed registration beyond the 30-day period. So there is a 30-day period to register the death. It should have four requirements. Four copies of the certificate of death accomplished correctly and completely. This is a picture of the certificate of death. Authenticated copy of the certificate of burial cremation or other means of corpse disposal if they were buried before the cause of death. Certificate of death was uh, done. 
Approval for registration by the local health officer in the box provided in the COD. That registration beyond the 30 days should have the four requirements. So if you fail to, if it's delayed, if you fail to do it within 30 days, following must be provided. So affidavit of delayed registration shall be executed. Oh, uh, what's happening? Okay, brightness is on. The administrator of the hospital clinic where the deceased dies, so there will be additional documents that will be provided. Affidavit of delayed registration. If elsewhere died, the attendant of death must have an affidavit. Otherwise, the nearest relative of the deceased or by any person having legal charge of the deceased before dying. Okay, beyond the 30 days. Administrative order number 2020-008, rules on MCCOD. The local health officer shall review the death certification compliance to completeness, correctness, and the latest ICD standards. So that's the inclusion of the new order. It must have the latest ICD standards. If non-compliant death certificate will be returned, shall be returned for correction. The certifier must correct and return certificate of death within three days of the receipt. Okay. So if it is for correction, you must return it within three days from the receipt of the death certificate. So administrative order, rules on MCCOD, all public and private health facilities shall comply with the licensing requirements on information management of the DOH facilities and services regulatory bureau, UHCHDs and MOHBARMM in coordination with the DOH KMITS and the DOHEB shall monitor compliance of health facilities on safekeep safekeeping of copies of all death certificates processed by the health facility. So it's important that the health facility must have a copy of the death certificate. Maintaining logbooks tracking the death certificate processed by the health facility submitted to the local health officer for review. Refer to medical legal officer and those not processed due to a signed waiver by the deceased nearest relative. Safekeeping of all signed waivers by the deceased nearest relative who opted to personally process the certificate of death without prejudice to the obligation of the health facility to certify the cause of death. So, issuance and implementation of internal policies and procedures to one, prohibit the practice of withholding death certificate for non-payment of medical bills. This has been, I think there was a law implemented because uh, this was a practice before wherein they withhold the death certificate because they didn't pay. Monitor and review the proper and ac accomplishment and transmittal of death certificates. <clears throat> And train licensed physicians, relevant medical staff, and hospital clinic admin on reporting, certifying, and reviewing causes of death, the latest ICD standards, and use of the verbal autopsy program. So, Administrative Order Number 2020-0008, Rules on MCCOD. Medical confidentiality law should not supersede the veracity of death certification. It adheres to RA 10173 or the Data Privacy Act 2012, which states that the personal information must be collected for specified and legitimate purposes. That this duty maintain confidentiality is to the family and significant others, common law spouse, guardian who is not akin of the disease. Also, it was explained to us that once the patient has died, the confidentiality uh, no longer holds because the confidentiality is only to the family and the significant others so this is why it's it's important to write the accurate cause of death because uh, sometimes uh, there was a time that uh, HIV infection was not revealed to the to the family okay but it has to be written on the certificate cause of death so that's one of the that's one of the examples that uh, for this slide. So HIV deaths. Oh, sorry, it comes in here. HIV deaths when the disease had positive confirmatory tests are 
was on retroviral treatment shall be reported it has to be placed on the on the certificate cause of death why do you need to put retroviral treatment uh, some of the drugs may actually be harmful to the patient the antiretroviral therapy so it uh, it will be explained later on uh, another uh, lesson but uh, the because of the because of the risk reward uh, the treatment still is is the treatment of antiretroviral treatment is outweighs the risk of dying without the antiretroviral treatment so uh, it has it's if if the therapeutic intervention caused the cause of death uh, it has to be placed on the COD on the certificate cause of death so sensitive data might be revealed by the death certificate hence doctors and all personnel officially handling them shall maintain the confidentiality about the identity and the cause of death so it will still they will still be maintaining the confidentiality okay so at noises shall a public disclosure of the identity of the disease be made without the consent from the next in of kin next of kin not next in kin so there will be no public disclosure but it will be placed on the death certificate and it will be uh, statistically reported but the identity of the person will not be publicly disclosed so that's what it says in here okay so that registration process responsible to report the informant or the founder may, may has the responsibility to report the responsibility to certify will be the attending MD the local health officer or the municipal health officer responsible to issue that certificate for birth purposes only the mayor the Sangunian or the municipal secretary may be able to issue a uh, the certificate for burial purposes only but it will be reviewed by the local health officer and if it's a Muslim or IP burial uh, it may be the yeah that's the one that will be issued by the mayor local civil registrar will be the one to collect the uh, that certificate one of the copies of the death certificate so DC 2022 to 0293 interim guidelines on the assessment of MCCOD the objectives is to provide the interim process and procedures essential to adopt and implement the MCCOD assessment and monitoring in the health facilities. The scope shall apply to all, so all government and private hospitals, all concerned entities, particularly those identified as certifiers and reviewers under the AO. Okay, so interim guidelines on assessment of MCCOD in health facilities, process flow, trained hospital health information management staff. So this is the one I, I told you about. They, they brought in IT staff. They will be the one to prepare the monthly death certificates to be assessed. They will be endorsed by the designated trained physician. The DTP, the designated trained physician, performs the DC assessment based on the standard tool, which is the verbal autopsy, and endorses the result of the assessment to the HHIM staff. So process flow continued, the HHIM staff encodes the monthly data on the MCCOD assessment module on the DOH data collect. So they were able to give us, but the data collect was an Excel file for now, I guess. So CHD, HFDU monitors, verifies and follows up submission of health facilities. This is not yet mandatory, but it will be once the universal health care uh, is, impl is fully implemented nationally so this will be what will be the standard flow of information and then there will be a general annual report to be submitted to the DOH HFPB so based on the statistics that's why in it's important that uh, every physician must have the same uh, language when it comes to the cause of death so that uh, the proper proper statistics may be placed and the uh, decision making will be much more accurate which is, this is what I explained in the previous lesson so still on the DC 2022-0293 the prescribed implementation year 
2022 quarter 3 policy issuance dissemination and capacity building to DOH Academy e-learning platform uh, they tried this this was the pilot program last year and the quarter 4 this implementation covering MCCOD started fourth quarter training. they were able to do this already last year place of registration where do you register the debt? So it is the city or municipality where the event occurred, not where the patient uh, has an address or previously lived. So there is a lot of cases, uh, especially here in Olongapo, wherein the patient sought uh, care in Manila where there are uh, better hospitals but they were uh, they were met with the demise of the patient so wherever that is like it's, it's in Quezon City or in Makati the city or municipality where the death occurred that's where the death certificate will be filed national mandates so civil registry law as was explained here in this lesson, AO number 1993, IRR Act of the 3753, Philippine Statistical Act, Philippine Code of Sanitation. So local government code, RA7160, who certifies the death, review of the death certificates, judicial order to correct death certificates, delayed registration, delayed registration denied, dismembered body parts. So those are the, the ones that were discussed. 2H mandates, Department Memorandum Number 2016-0286, filling out of the interval between onset and death portion in the death certificate. So, it's important that we fill out the onset and death portion in the death certificate. So, whether it's be, it can be uh, minutes, it can be an approximation, uh, like one to two years, the, if you place death diabetes mellitus, as a as a underlying cause of death it will be you will have to write out what is the interval between the onset of the diabetes mellitus and the cause of death the department secular number 2012 to cause of a death prior so death certificate in line with icd 10 there is a quick reference guide that uh, you can download okay i already have a copy so how are we going to place it it's a quick reference guide that's available also online at uh, AO 2020-008 which is the basis of why we were training uh, the MCC OD cause of death department circulars 2022-0293 interim guidelines in the assessment and then there will be an, uh, a follow-up to that the 2024 uh, department circular which will also be an interim guidelines again for uh, the especially the one where in uh, they were adopt, trying to adopt a six month period to be certified as the attending physician of the patient instead of the 12 months previously written so section 6 civil registry law body parts removed by surgery this is the certificate of dismembered body part that was uh, I mentioned a while ago so there is a certificate um, before burial of the body part so body parts removed by surgery are not considered as death of a person so it should not be registered since these are for burial purposes only okay these are for only for burial purposes mini quiz so they try to tell us to mini quiz because uh, we have to undergo the pretest and the post test to be certified as trainer so AO 2020-0008 directs TOH Health facilities and service regulatory bureau to monitor the compliance of all health facilities and issuance and implementation of two prohibit the practice of withholding debt certificates for non-payment of medical bills. Correct. Train licensed physicians, relevant medical staff in hospital to make their own reporting. So not only physicians but relevant medical staff. On latest ICD standards and use of verbal policy, both or none more, more than likely. This is both. Certificated cause of death for Muslims and indigenous Filipinos should be forwarded to the local health officer within 48 hours after death. There is a slide in there above. The certificates returned by the local health officer for improvement must be corrected and submitted by the death within three days from receipt. So that's letter C. So we have 
to be able to do that or you will be sent a uh, notice of explanation practice correct death certification give your last tribute to the disease so this is just a reminder to for physicians to give your last tribute to the disease ensure that it can be included in mortality rates and public health programs so an example was given to us uh, was flashed on the screen wherein a uh, certain doctor placed like six six causes of death there were only like three lines but he tried to place all of the patient's disease some of them did not lead to the cause of death okay but as a respect we should write what is that cause of death okay so whether this patient died uh, from severe dengue we should place their severe dengue and not placing their the complications of the severe dengue like acute renal failure acute liver failure we don't really need to put those things there we just need to put their severe dengue and it can be included in the mortality rate and public health programs and it can lead to decision making so that's the important part of why these statistics are why we are trying to correct these statistics is because we want uh, people on a high level deciding on the fate of the nation to have accurate data so if you wrote severe dengue but uh, it was placed on other causes of death but you placed there like the patient had acute renal failure and uh, nephritis it will be the statistic will be placed on a different disease instead of what should have been and what should have been decided upon by the uh, especially by the DOH secretary so that's why the it's important to practice the correct death certification why this training is being conducted so that's it that's it folks for the uh, second lesson for the medical certificate cause of death i hope you like that even though i'm droning and trying i'm trying actually to practice on how i would be uh, saying this in front of a room full of doctors <laughs> so forgive me for just trying to uh, collect recollect my thoughts but and trying to do this in English so I could do this in Tagalog but I'd rather do it in English because uh, in YouTube that's why I'm not doing most of my videos in Tagalog because still it's 2023 and I started YouTube in 2009 the closed captions or, uh, the closed captions uh, can only be provided in English and other supported languages there are no support for tagalog or filipino languages so it's better i do this this way so that this video can be found on the internet uh, as i try and try again eventually i'll be coming up in a <laughs> with a recorded version of this video but you know just for the sake of uh, putting this out um, thank you very much for watching and i hope you like that and if you have questions you can write them down in the comment section below i have not been active on social media that's why uh, i have the the videos are set far further apart i think the last video was like a month ago so but anyway i hope you guys enjoy this uh, live stream and give me a thumbs up and hopefully i get found on the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, thank you very much. And salamat po. And God bless. Peace out.